I saw Don Cornelius tell Jeffrey Daniel to pick me, and I got chosen to come down the line first. After that, me and Jeffrey Daniels had a conversation, and that's kind of how I started my music video career. My name is Lisa Weldon, and I was a Soul Train dancer from 1983 to 1984. I was born and raised in Detroit, Michigan, the Motor City. I grew up in Detroit, same projects as Diana Ross and Della Reese at the Brewster Projects. And what inspired me to dance was just, it was just something to do. The kids in the neighborhood, everybody just loved dancing and we would kind of do that to stay out of trouble. Dancing appealed to me when I was younger. Me and my childhood girlfriend, Cheryl Cunningham and Courtney Kirby, we loved the movie Sparkle. We saw that movie over a hundred times and we just inspired to be like those girls. I was a sassy one called Sister. And we did a lot of talent shows where we danced and, you know, just stayed out of trouble and were known as Sparkle in the neighborhood and one of those red dresses. And we ended up getting those red dresses and doing a talent show and we won in high school. There was a dance show in Detroit that I was a part of, and it was called The Scene. And I started dancing on The Scene when I was about 15 years old. It was a very popular show, and I became popular on the show. We used to do the hustle. I was a little one at the time. I would twirl around everybody's body, and we did a lot of performances at the state fairgrounds. And kids would pay to come and see us, and back then the prize were trophies, so just won a lot of trophies. Everybody watched Soul Train. Soul Train was everything. So coming from the scene, if you even got the opportunity to be on Soul Train, it was like you made it. I spent a lot of time in California as a child. Once I graduated high school in 1982, I moved out with my aunt and my cousins, Lynn and Laney. And we lived in Harbor City in a neighborhood called The Woods. There I met a friend named Pam Nikki Baker, and we were both interested in dance. And we got together with a group of the other children in the neighborhood, and we got a group called Freak Patrol going. <laughs> we would go to a lot of Uncle Jam's army parties back in the day, and we'd be like, hey, let's break out, do like the KDJ. And that was like, you know, Kevin, David, and Junior. And we'd just break out doing a dance and just freak on each other or whatever, or find some of the kids and it'd be a girl dance with one of our members, and we had like, these jackets that said like rude girls and the guys had on like nursing coats that said like freak patrol. And it was just a really good time. Nikki, my friend, her and Nicole met the dance coordinator at an event and they went to Soul Train first and then they ended up taking me. We went. And then, you know, you stand at the door and you're waiting, everybody's really nervous. And then they kind of handpicked you to come in and I was lucky enough to get through the door. It was everything. I mean, it was like once you get to Soul Train, it's like you've made it. You know what I mean? So it's a beautiful experience. And it was just iconic. I mean, everybody is happy and dancing and just really colorful and just a beautiful experience to be a part of. It wasn't a goal of mine to be fashion forward. I would just come as I was. I wore a lot of leather back in the day. Then I actually met a friend of mine called Tamichi Briggs, and he was a fashion icon on the show. And he was like, Lisa, you know, let me style you. And so I was like, of course. And so then from that point on, I started wearing Tamichi Tony Briggs fashions. He made me this black dress. It was just a tube dress and it had like spaceships all over it. So I really loved that dress. We went on to do a lot of fashion shows together. He even did an article in Write On Magazine where he made a mermaid dress. And I was the model for that. And young girls got to write in and describe why they would want this dress. And then they got to win the dress. So that was great. I had a lot of dance partners on the show. My main dance partner was Louis Ski Carr. I also danced with Marco and Myron as well. One of my signature dances was the hip roll. So something that I really love to do, and I would do that with Myron a lot. And we'd like for you to meet two of our Soul Train dancers. How are you, name? Lisa Maps. Hey, Lisa. I only danced on the show for two years. So I would say somewhere in the middle, I got to do the scrum for you. They would just pick random dance couples to do that.
my favorite thing about going down the Soul Train line, I mean, you just felt special. Everybody was hyping you up, you know what I mean? You just felt great. I mean, that was your moment to shine. So I absolutely loved it. One of my most memorable moments was there's a little area where Don Cornelius stands and he announces the groups or he announces that the show's about to start. And I actually got picked to dance there and I did my little role. I didn't really get to dance behind any artists, but it was a great experience one time when I saw Don Cornelius tell Jeffrey Daniel to pick me and I got chosen to come down the line first, which was very special. And then after that, me and Jeffrey Daniels had a conversation and that's kind of how I started my music video career and was asked to be in a music video that he was choreographing for a group called Ready for the World. Well, actually, the first video was back in the day during the hip hop scene. A lot of us that danced on Soul Train, we did Party Train, the Gap Band video at Venice Beach. I did Climax, I got to meet in the ladies' room. I was a main girl for that. I did The Time, Ice Cream Castles. There was an artist by the name of Suave. I was on his album cover and he remade the song, My Girl. I did that video, Yarborough People's Don't Waste Your Time. I was a lead girl in that video. It was great to be a part of that and kind of be the first video vixen. Music videos and the movie kind of intertwined because as far as the movie part went, I dated an artist that was coming up in the hip hop scene back in the 80s. And we used to go to an underground club called The Radio. This particular individual, you know, was involved in the breaking movies. And so by me dating this individual, then I was in the breaking movies as well. So that's kind of what the transition was. I was just in the beginning, like I think I was in the Breaking 2 trailer and I was on the stage while they were doing some of the raps and dancing on stage. I stopped dancing on Soul Train into 1985 because I started going to a business college and um, took up a trade. At that college, I met my first daughter's father. After I got the business degree, I got a job at Paramount Pictures and I worked there for about three years. And then after that, I met my husband, Charles. We've been married now for 30 years and we have five daughters. My daughter, Lauren, that I had while I was working at Paramount Pictures, she was actually a contestant on Survivor. She's a fan favorite, she's now an influencer. So on one of her TikTok videos, she mimicked me back in the day when I did Soul Trend, like she reinvented my moves, which was awesome. <laughs> Currently now that all my five daughters are grown, I am actually a postpartum doula, actually very successful at that. And I'm a postpartum doula to a lot of the entertainers in the Los Angeles County area. So very high profile clients I represent for that. I've been doing that now for about 25 years. <laughs> My overall experience with Soul Train was absolutely amazing. I'd love to do it again. I wish they could actually recreate the show. I know that they did do that for a while and it was amazing, but they really need to bring things like that back. You know, it keeps people safe. It gets our people out there. You know what I'm saying? And everybody look forward to Soul Train. On Saturday, I don't care what nationality you were. Everybody was glued to the television. We need to bring it back. Mm -hmm.